Hi y'all, it's Andrea over at SewSmart.com and today I am here to show you how to sew this very sweet clutch. This is a super simple design that I have taken to the next level using just a few angles, of course my favorite, the press lock, and then a gorgeous focal fabric for the flap. This particular print is by Anna Maria Horner. I'm pretty sure it's been discontinued, but let me tell you, for those of you who quilt, you could create a stunning flap with a little bit of effort there for your clutch. So this, again, opens with the press lock there. It just has a plain interior. You could easily incorporate pockets into that. Takes really just a few minutes to sew up. And it is all made from two different size rectangles. The first of which is 12 by 16. And then I'll show you how to angle that in the tutorial. And the second is eight by nine. So shall we get started? To make this clutch, you're gonna start with a basic rectangle that measures 12 inches across by 16 inches tall. You're gonna fold that in half to get a piece that's 12 by eight. And then you're going to take your clear acrylic ruler and your rotary cutter and your cutting mat and position that ruler on the right hand bottom corner and then angle that so it comes in just one inch from that top right hand edge. And you're going to cut off that triangular piece to angle this. And then you'll repeat that same process on the other side. And that's what's going to give your clutch this great shape. So you'll cut out two of those. This is just my pattern piece here, which then if you create a pattern piece, you could save that and then just cut multiples from that. So I already have my interior panel cut out and I did seam two pieces of fabric together. So that's why the pattern would be helpful because then you could seam your fabric and use scraps and then just cut out the shape of your clutch from that. This interior is quilt weight cotton fabric, so I back that with one layer of like size Pellon 809. I'm just gonna fold that in half. And then I created a similar panel, same size, same pattern, crafted from a woven giraffe print. And this is by Premier Prints, and it's a little bit thicker fabric, so I did not use any Pellon on that. I'm also gonna fold that in half, and then head on over to the machine and stitch the sides closed of both of these panels. And for this, I'm gonna go ahead and use the 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And then only from the interior panel, I'm gonna trim away that excess pellon and fabric approximately four inches into that seam. I'm not going to trim the exterior because it's woven and I don't want that to get too frayed. So I'm gonna turn the exterior right sides out, poke out those corners. You see, that's a really cute shape. And then for the interior, I'm just going to fold that top edge over. And you can see that Pellon really adds a lot of stability and body to that cotton fabric. That's the interior. Then for the exterior, I wanna fold that top edge inward And then I'm gonna fit this interior inside of the exterior. And 
that Pelon even offers that exterior a lot of body as well. So the interior and the exterior of the clutch are complete. Now I want to craft a really fun flap closure. So I have this colorful fabric by Anna Maria Horner that I'm going to use. The exterior flap is eight inches across by nine inches tall. And I have the same crosshatch cotton for the interior. I did back that flap with one layer of the Pelon because it's cotton. And this again, you'll notice is just a rectangle as is the lining. And what I want to do with this is angle, fold that in half, and then slightly angle the bottom portion of that flap. And again, that's about four inches to one inch, you can see there. So I came in one inch at the bottom and four inches high, and that will offer me a great shape on that flap. And you could create a pattern for that as well. And then I am going to stitch down the sides, across that angle, across the base, and up, and I'm gonna leave this top portion open to turn that. Okay, and now you can turn this right side out, poke out those corners, and then go ahead and press it nice and flat. And this is a beautiful flap here. I absolutely love the blocking and the colors of this. This flap here would be beautiful crafted from any really dominant, colorful fabric. It's essentially, it's a focal point, but that's what it's going to look like on the front of that. And it is just really stunning. This is such a simple design, but because of the animal print and then the block print, it just really makes it pop. So I have to decide which side, because they're both identical, that I would like to be the front. And I'm leaning towards this side, so I want to go ahead and top stitch that flap just around the edge to finish. Right, and then I am going to use a press lock closure on this. You could put a buttonhole in there and sew a big button on it. You could use hook and loop tape. You could use a snap. And the press lock closures have four parts. This is the base there, and these are really sharp prongs, so. You might want to use something beside your fingers to lift those up. And there's a back plate there, and then these ones are not quite as sharp. It's a little brad, and that holds the actual locking portion on. And then you open up this bottom portion, and that will stay open like that for you so that you can center that on your flap. And then you want to mark where those two holes are because you're going to have to use a seam ripper there to cut two tiny holes in that. And I try not to cut the stitches, but in this case, I'm going to have to. So I'm going to come back over that with another row of stitching. And I'll center that press lock on there and take that front brad and fit that through those holes. That's what it looks like on the front. And then on the back, I like to use like a marker with the cap on to press down those brads, otherwise it hurts your fingers. Okay, now the lock is attached. 
attach to the flap and I need to fit that raw edge of the flap in between the interior and the exterior layers of this clutch and I want a lot of that flap showing on the front so I can see all of that awesome color. So that looks good. So I'm gonna just make sure that the flap is straight and then go ahead and pin all those layers in place. And then I'll remove that front center pin and fold that flap over. And the top portion of this is the part that has the buckle closer to the top because then the lock can slide in there and it might be a good idea to go ahead and slide that lock in there so you install this the proper way these brads on this back side are very sharp so they will go through all of these layers of fabric however you don't want to go through that interior layer so Hold your lock in the desired position and then reach your hand in there and just poke those sharp ends through and then take this back plate in and fit that over those sharp ends and then go ahead and fold them inward to close and that's what it looks like on the inside there and now that is secure and you can press it like that then you just need to realign the top of your clutch there and put your pin back in place to hold and then double check everything and make sure that the flap closes nice because you could still adjust the flap from the back if you have too much distance i think that's really really pretty love it now all you have to do is open that up, put this on a machine deck, and sew all the way around. And the clutch is done. You see how very simple that was? And just by working with two rectangles, we created something that has a very unique shape and is stunning because of the accent flap there which becomes the focal point and then the hardware adds yet another layer of detail to the design you could easily incorporate interior pockets into this perhaps a little key fob you could add a little wristlet strap this was just really this tutorial was meant to demonstrate how if you visualize the shape and then add some interesting fabric, color, and a slight angle. You can really create a great piece. It was an absolute pleasure to sew with you today. I will be back soon with another inspired project. And until then, please know the creative genius in me will be celebrating the creative genius in you. Have a beautiful week, everyone.